Welcome to Proverbs 31 by Design. My name is Tina Heisman. I help Christian women who are struggling with the overwhelm of trying to balance being a wife, mother, and career woman. When they work with me, they discover how to create their own unique level of balance so they can finally experience the joy, passion, fulfillment, and success that they have been seeking in life. This month, we are focusing on the topic of love since Valentine's Day falls in February. So today we're going to talk about how to increase our intimacy with God. But before we get started, I want to let you know I have a free private Proverbs 31 community on Facebook where you can come to get inspiration for your life. Search Proverbs 31 by design in the Facebook search bar. Also, I have created a free download called The Ultimate Guide to Guilt-Free Self-Care. It's a guide to help you take care of yourself in mind, body, and spirit so you can feel like your best self every day. You can visit my website to download that. Okay, let's dive in and talk about how to increase your intimacy with God. So if you're listening, I'm assuming it is because you are interested in wanting to know more about how you can increase your intimacy with God. And you probably already know the benefits of having an intimate relationship with God, that that relationship is life-giving and it helps us navigate our lives. It helps us feel peace, even in times of challenge, and it helps us feel joy. It helps keep us close to our loved ones. It even helps us forgive people when we're hurt, and it helps us be our best. But if there is one thing that many of my clients talk to me about, it is that while they desire to have a close relationship with God, they don't really know exactly how to do it, and they don't feel like they have the time. And so that's why we're here today, to talk about this very thing. I'm super excited. I have a guest for you today. Her name is Liz Lassa. Liz and I have known each other for more than 20 years. Interestingly, we knew each other in a previous life before. (laughs) We were both living in Florida doing public relations. And then coincidentally, we both became life coaches and moved up to the Chicago area. So Liz has been married 23 years to her husband, John. They have three children ranging in age between 8 and 17, and they still live here in the Chicagoland area. Liz has been in ministry for most of the last 10 years. She is an awesome speaker and a retreat leader, as well as the creator of the Spiritual Circle Journal. And that is a prayer tool that we are going to be talking about today. I admire Liz so much. She is so connected to God, and I love her ability to talk to him and listen to him. And that's why I brought her on here today, so you can learn from her too. Welcome, Liz. Thank you, Tina. Thanks so much for having me on I'm glad you could be here. I'm excited. So you have a great story about how you got started in ministry. Will you share that with us? Sure. Yes. Well, I moved up here to Chicago about 12 years ago, and I really felt God was calling me here for ministry. I got very involved in MOPS, which is Moms of Preschoolers and in leadership there. And then I had my third baby, and I was very tired, (laughs) as many mothers can relate. And I didn't have time to longhand journal. I didn't have time to meet with God very much. And I was missing that time with him and that deeper relationship. And so I started just crying out in prayer to find a way to get back to where we had been before baby number three. And one of the things that he showed me was I could use this prayer card that showed a format for a quiet time that I had created for myself. I could mind map in circles and I could journal and I could put all three things together And I created something called a spiritual circle journal and putting those together made this time with God go deep, but I was able to do it in about 10 or 15 minutes because I was able to jump around in circles. I created a circle key with what each circle meant in it. And then I just bullet pointed in those circles and I loved how deep and intimate things felt with God. 
in such a short amount of time. And it was incredible how that happened. So when that happened, I shared it with my girlfriends. And within a few months of doing that in a girlfriend's living room, I ended up on national Moody radio and was shipping journals all over the country. So I really didn't set out to start this ministry for the Spiritual Circle Journal. It just kind of happened to me. And I started getting speaking requests and uh, you know, from churches wanting me to help them help teach their women how to meet with God in this way. So it kind of is a neat, is really God's ministry completely. And I just followed along, <laughs> so to speak. For sure. For sure. And it's been a joy watching that retreat that, that, that you go in that direction. It's really been awesome. And I think that what you help people with comes out of your own story. So will you share with us, like, what do you think are the biggest roadblocks that people have when it comes to trying to increase their intimacy with God? Right. Well, I think the first thing is time. And I think that applies to everyone, not just moms with young ones from doing these retreats, various churches. I find that women are just lacking time. It is a resource they don't have enough of, and they need to be able to meet with God in a deep way. But they don't have an hour. You know, they don't have an hour. They want, they wish they did, but they don't a lot of times. So helping them overcome the roadblock of not having enough time is crit- critical. And then perfectionism, I find, is another thing when I was in MOPS leadership. If women were not able to meet with God in the way that they were used to, maybe say pre-children, or in the way they were hoping to, they wouldn't do it at all if it wasn't just the way they wanted it to be. And so that is kind of dangerous because we need to be spending time with God. And when we seek time with God, we seek God in quiet time. He leads, he guides, he encourages, he gives us that message for a moment. And it's really important. Mm -hmm. So these are really the two biggest roadblocks I see. And this journal helps overcome those because it's just circles prayer circles and bullet mm-hmm. points. So you don't have to be as perfect and, you know, write all fluidly and perfect and have that blank white page staring back at you. Right. <laughs> I, I hear that a lot about the blank white page. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit more then about how the spiritual circle journal works? Yes. So there are nine talking circles. I'm sorry. There's nine, there's four talking circles and five listening circles and nine circles total. Mm -hmm. And they're all on one piece of paper. And there's a circle key at the front of the journal that explains what each circle means. And you really move around in those circles based on where you are in prayer time. So just like you and I in a conversation right now, there's no order to our conversation necessarily. That's how a real relationship works, right? We don't, you know, say one thing first and then the other, and then the next thing, it kind of, the thought comes into our head or the feeling something's taking on our heart and it comes in no particular order. So you can jump around in these circles as you're journaling in just bullet points, very quick thoughts, quick, quick things, uh, writing a verse that comes up for you. That's God's been showing you that week in the circle. And there's, about 90 pages in the circle journal. There's also a kid's version as well. And it really makes journaling very simple because it's just a bullet point in a designated circle and you go wherever you want on the page and it makes it really simple. Yeah, I totally agree. Definitely can relate to the mind jumping all over the place. (laughs) Would you mind just listing out like to give us an idea, like what are the nine different areas that we might find ourselves journaling on in the spiritual circle journal? Okay. So the, there are four talking circles and the first one is journal entry. And this is really that what's on our heart, what's on our mind, kind of what we would share with God, uh, anything really personal and what's pressing for us that day or that week. The second is the confession circle, and we all, a lot of us know what that is, just confessing our sins and getting right with God. The third talking circle is prayer, which is what we need help with God from, whether for ourselves or for others. And the fourth talking circle is thank you or adoration, which is a gratitude circle and sh- just thanking God for how he's showing up in our life as a comforter, a counselor, that kind of mm-hmm. thing, however we adore him. Uh, the Five talking, five listening circles are first one is verse or lyric, and that is what verse or lyric to a song maybe that is really resonating for you. 
that week. Uh, the other one is message, which is what is the message or main point you think God wants you to get from what he's teaching you that week, whether it's through a sermon, a Christian podcast, what you're reading, your devotional book, your Bible, your Bible study, that kind of thing. What's the main message he's trying to get to you? And maybe he's repeating it several times. Uh, the next one is lesson learned. And this is the light bulb moment or the bigger lesson that you might be getting from whatever it is God is teaching you. And that one's not always filled in, but it's a very important one. As a coach, we know that growth happens when people stop cycling and making the same mistakes. So that lesson learned circle is really critical. And then the other one is actions. And this is what actions is God putting on your heart to do that day and, and ask you know, ask him what we can do for him that day. And that's getting still with God and just saying, God, what do you have for me today? And seeing he, if he puts a nudge or a tug or a tap on your shoulder, something or someone on your heart, maybe you need to call Susan today, or maybe you need to bring Anne a dinner, or wh whatever that might be. And then the last one is the God moving circle. And this is where you're seeing God show up in your life. And sometimes people might write this stuff off as coincidences or just so happen moments. But these are the things that when you start seeing God show up in your life, it's very powerful. And this is my favorite circle of all of them because it really is where we see God take care of us, not just in the big things, but in the, in the small things as well as the big things. It is so true. It is so powerful. So powerful. And on that note, the next question I wanted to ask you is, why does this way of connecting with God make us feel closer or help us feel closer to God? I think this way of connecting with God really helps people learn to listen to God. I think we're all good at talking to God, but listening and being expectant that he will communicate something back. He will lead. He will guide if we take the time to seek him. And that expectation makes it not a one-sided relationship anymore. And I think a lot of people are wanting more of that. They're wanting to hear more from God in their life. And this journal just makes that really simple. And, and I think that's really the bottom line is it's a place where if we know our days and our weeks are being led by God and not just the big decisions like where are we moving and should I take this job, but in the small things and the daily actions, well, how do I reply to my son when he says that or my daughter when she does that or, you know, praying that God would show us how to respond daily to things and what to do that's where he can have a lot of divine appointments that are really cool and really exciting in our lives. That is so true. So true. Mm -hmm. I'm in a hundred percent on that. And I'd like to add as a side note um, that the journal is really beautiful. It's uh, the graphic design that Liz had done on it is really pretty. And so it's just, it's lovely to sit with it in your lap during your quiet time and to use it. And so we can, um, Liz, let's tell them how they can get in touch with you and look at the journal and uh, maybe order one if they're interested. Can you help us out with that? Sure. Yes. You can get a spiritual circle journal at www.lizlassa.com on the journal page. And you can also, there's, there's adult or kids version there as well. And you can also get the Moody radio interview on there if you would like to listen to a longer, more detailed explanation of the journal and how it works, as well as pictures and things like that to see what it looks like. And also, if you want, I just uploaded my Gossip Girl No More talk that uh, is on the speaking page, if you'd like to hear that. That's a free talk for right now. I've got it up there for free, and it's a real fun one that I recently recorded. So that's something some people might enjoy. If they don't want to, you know, if they don't want to have gossip in their life very much as well. So that's a way of connecting deeply with others in their life. The journal is about connecting deeply with God. Gossip Girl No More is about helping you to have deeper connections with women and people in our lives. Awesome. I love that. Liz, I want to say thank you so very much for coming on the podcast today and taking time out of your day. Well, you're welcome. I love being here, Tina, anytime. Thank you. Okay, girls, um, I will put the link to Liz's website in the comments so that you can go there. And if you didn't get it the first time around, you can take a look at her website and all the resources that she mentioned. I want to thank you so much for listening in. Please let me know if you have any specific questions. 
And remember, on my website, you can find the ultimate guide to guilt-free self-care. And on Facebook, I have the Proverbs 31 by Design Community and also one-on-one coaching if that is where you feel like you need to go. Thank you so very much. I will see you all next week.